billions. That's billions with a capital B. I talk all the time on all these episodes about technology changing our industry, right? And in this podcast, you are going to actually hear about three things that are changing our industry. You're going to hear about air disc brakes. You're going to hear about EVs. And you're going to hear about robots driving trucks or autonomous trucking, autonomous driving, however you want to refer to it. And I think it's really important for anyone, again, working in our space, you need to understand electrical in and out. Like you need to be an expert at it. Everything is changing completely on these vehicles. We talk about it in the podcast. Um, so on this one, uh, we have Shaw with ZF. ZF, just, just a monsterly huge company, worldwide, global footprint. And they are the ones building the technology that you're seeing in all these EVs and advanced driver assist systems and all these other things. So I really hope you enjoy the episode. Uh, again, commenting, liking, sharing, it all helps us. But I'll, I'll stop yammering here, let you watch the episode, let us know what you think about it. Welcome to the DL, everyone. Another episode here with your host, Tyler Robertson, also the CEO and founder of Visa Laptops. This is the show where you learn everything going on in the truck industry, truck repair, how trucks are built, how things are made, how things are broke, how things are fixed, all the exciting stuff we have going on. And I'm really excited to have Shaw here with us today with ZF. And if you don't know who ZF is, we're going to break it all down here in a second and kind of set the landscape and everything for everyone. But Shaw, welcome. Welcome to the show, man. Pleasure to have you on here. Oh, well, thank you, Tyler, for, for introducing me and for having me on. It's always fun to talk about trucks and what's what's going on in, in this industry and where we are headed to. We're living through exciting times, sometimes painful, but lots of opportunities at the end of the town. Oh man, we, we are so going to get into like the excitement. Like I, I, I agree. Like I'm like, man, I have a front row seat for all this technology and change happening in our industry. And there's a lot of things going on that ZF's right in the middle of all this. But with ZF, I mean, can you, a lot of, I think people in North America don't know who ZF is because obviously ZF's a very big company. I looked up your guys' financials, publicly traded, right? It's like a $40 billion a year company. You guys are all over the world, and I know you're much bigger over in Europe and more recognized name-wise than outside the U.S. Can you can you just explain to people what ZF does here in North America? Um, so you're absolutely right. Um, ZF is a huge company, um, and to my surprise, as well as uh, your viewers' surprise, they indulge ev in everything from fast cars, technology, all the way to marine engines, windmills. It's, it's a huge corporation and, and I'm excited to be a part of this. Um, here within North America, um, strong presence in the Pascar industry, uh, braking systems, uh, sensors, suspensions, all of those things. And uh, in the commercial vehicle industry, uh, we are um, leaders in braking, um, fundamental ABS systems, you know, as, uh, as your viewers might very well know, um, we, Vapco uh, was uh, was purchased by ZF, and we are now part of ZF, and and that gives us the opportunity not only uh, to to look at the portfolio that ZF had and uh, add to it the portfolio that Vapco brings to 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 the table as well. Um, but like you said, you know we we have about um, fifteen thousand people working in the um, in just the commercial vehicle side of the business. Uh, we are in more than 27 countries, um, about 4 billion euros every year in R&D. Uh, revenues, like you said, um, pretty high up there as a, as a corporation, about 40 billion euros as well. So pr large presence, huge footprint, global footprint. We, we bring in, um, if, if products are developed to, to meet regulations in other markets, we bring them to the North American market as, as a good to have. Uh, but as an advantage to our industry as well. Yeah, and for the audience listening to this, like the, where I know ZF from, I think was actually first like Meritor had something going on with like the automated transmissions back in the 90s. Um, and then we had Meritor Wabco. That was like, a those are two separate companies for people to understand. That wasn't a product line of Meritor's. It was like a distribution deal here in the US. And uh, ZF does own Wabco now. And I guess I kind of want to get into that a little bit because... Advanced Driver Assist Systems, or ADAS as I call it. Um, I think everyone pronounced that word a little bit differently. 
Um, but I, I kind of view it as a prelude to autonomous trucking, right? Because with ADAS, you have sensors, you got computer systems, you got radar, you got all these things that are monitoring your surroundings around you. And obviously for autonomous trucks, you need those things, those technology. And I remember being at a dealership back in the day, the first kind of like, it was, I think it was eaten with their Vorad system, kind of came out and everyone hated it, had all kinds of issues. People were like, how do I turn it off? I'd beeping all the time. And the technology's changed a lot since then when it comes to ADAS systems. So where are we at today? Are, are these things actively installed on trucks? How good's the technology compared to then? Break it down for us. So obviously, right, uh, the sensor technology, that's one of the biggest things that that uh, autonomous vehicles require. We've come a long, long way in sensor technology, and we will keep on uh, moving forward as well. So as your, your viewers and listeners might know, uh, there are five levels of SAE autonomous uh, driving, zero through five. Um, in the North American market, we are seeing more and more prevalence of the level two plus ADAS systems. Uh, this is uh, truly an assist system for uh, the driver, more comfort, more safety for the driver. You know, think about blind spot monitoring, collision mitigation. If, if you guys have, have uh, used trucks that have that or if your um, personal vehicles have that, those are all coming fast and furious at us. And we are seeing higher and higher penetration of these technologies in, in especially the commercial vehicles. Uh, we as an industry have have said that we would bypass level three. And one of the reasons why, why we thought about bypassing three as an industry, not, not just at ZF or, or, uh, or other places, even the larger OEMs, the amount of effort and, and the engineering resources that would take for us to get to level three, uh, we thought it would be better used to go to level four. Level four now truly starts getting into autonomous driving where uh, it's hands off or no driver in the system as well. So, you know, um, again, if your listeners are, are uh, aware of the fact, um, 33 uh, states in the United States now, uh, now allow for driverless vehicles to be on the road. Uh, so the, the, uh, the regulatory body itself is embracing autonomous vehicles on the roads much more quickly than other parts of, of, uh, of the globe. Uh, pass cars not moving as quickly enough. Uh, you know, pass cars will see autonomous driving. Start, uh, you do see a lot of um, Waymos being uh, dri driving their uh, driverless, uh, rather promoting their driverless drivers and stuff. But truly, if if, if uh, I don't know if your viewers are aware, but Google and um, uh, USPS have been running autonomous trucks from uh, in the Sun Belt states for about a year and a half now. So not not to scare you guys, but the technology is there, building on it, and um, truly, truly exciting times. Yeah, it, it, it really is. And I, I guess I'm, I'm learning some stuff here. I didn't realize we're like, okay, level two today, forget three, we're going, we're going right to four. Um, but it makes sense as you were kind of breaking it down there for everybody. And I, I've seen a little bit of that. I know, you know, Daimler with their Freightliner Cascadia, they got like a period of time. Now you can leave your hands off the steering wheel and, and those things are happening. So you're starting to see these things more and more out there. And the question people, I guess there's two questions people always ask me, right? And I think we see, so first I'm just curious, maybe like your opinion more than anything else here on these questions. Um, so the first one really is, is like, where do you, where do you see autonomous trucking taking place? Is it really like freight across the country? Is it more like in the shipyards when people just drop a trailer and truck off and take another one? Uh, where do you think we'll kind of see that first, like an actual like commercial use, not in like the hype videos and the, the marketing stuff that we see out there? No, the, the, very rightly put, Tyler. Um, definitely mining industry and yard automation. Those will be coming up much, much quicker and, and as logically they should because they are more, much more contained environment. Um, your parameters are a lot more restricted. You know, you don't have pedestrians, you don't have animals, et cetera, coming through. So the system doesn't have to, uh, to react as much as it would on the road. Um, but then to, to further build on that, um, that technology will come onto class eight trucks uh, 
and we call it depot to depot. So for example, if, if there is a warehouse in San Francisco and there is a warehouse in Phoenix, um, going from the roads of the warehouse to the highway, the driver would be in control. But once the highway, uh, the truck is on the highway, that's when level four truly helps us. Uh, and it, you know, you have a set path, you have sensors that are constantly monitoring the 360 degrees around the truck. Um, and, um, you know, like I was telling you, it's the Sunbelt state, so you, you don't deal with weather as much. But at the same time, it gives you a learning opportunity, learning opportunity for the system to see how the system behaves and what changes need to be made, uh, with, with, uh, you know, first with simulations in, in labs, et cetera, and then, uh, then on the road as well. So um, like, like you rightfully so said, uh, in my mind, and what we have seen from our customers, mining is is going all for it because of the environment that they work in and and you know the, the their needs. Um, yard is coming fast and furious. There are a couple of big players doing yard automation, and then uh, class eight uh, by twenty four we should start seeing um, in the fifties to hundreds of vehicles being on the road. Well, you just you just answered my second question, right? When's it coming? And I I fully agree with you. Is as People in the industry, as we talk to a lot of people and go to these conferences, everyone's saying really the same thing. Like the point to point, yeah, gets the media um, or someone, you know, Budweiser announces they hold a load autonomously or whatever it is. But it's really the application use will happen in those drop points, contained yards or even five, 10 miles an hour, whatever it is around in the yards and just a little bit safer environment. Um, so, yeah, it's, it's, it's really interesting. It, and it. I think I when I talk to people, they're always like, Tyler, when are we gonna have trucks delivering all this freight? I'm like, guys, when that's fully autonomous, that's that's a long ways out there. Yeah, there's a lot of bridges to be crossed and um everyone I everyone I've talked to, maybe you feel differently. They're just like, Man, getting you know, the first ninety eight percent's not that bad. It's that last two percent that's gonna make sure that we want Absolutely. this to work right. Absolutely. And I think Tyler, the other thing not to forget is the ecosystem around it. Right? I mean Yes, the bigger players can easily, easily have their own ecosystem built around it. But when we start getting into, if you, if you can think about Uber, right? Uh, Uber, the, if you run into an Uber-like problem and Uber has Uber freights, how do you scale it up to the level that we need to? Uh, and, and how do you make it reliable? You know, scaling is one thing, but to ensure in, in our industry, you know, timing is everything. Um, yeah. If you can't guarantee timing, then, you know, how do you compensate for uptime? You know, are these systems going to break down? We are working towards it, but those are the challenges. Like you said, 98% done, devil in the details. Yeah. Yeah. It's, I mean, I, and I keep, the other thing I keep saying, what you've already said is I keep saying, guys, people are spending billions of dollars to make this happen. It's going to happen. And you said it yourself, you guys spent over $4 billion just at ZF on R and D. And I know there's a lot, that's not all autonomous, but there's a lot of money, a lot of companies. You mentioned some big name companies like Uber and Google doing these things as well. Uh, so very, very interesting stuff there. Um, so let's talk a little bit about another one that you guys are kind of big into. All right. And um, I, I think it's a technology people don't understand the impact of repair shops a lot of. Um, but there's some safety impacts, and that's air. That's essentially the uh, air disc brakes on commercial trucks. So when I grew up, man, it's all drum brakes. Um, and now, now things have changed a little bit. So uh, ZF, you're you're in that you're in that space. Uh, again, give us a little you know background. What's going on there with air brake, air disc brakes? You're right about that. I mean, we were the first to the market with single piston air disc brakes, uh, starting about 2016, 2017. And that technology now has moved on to a dual piston air disc brake, you know, and, and as your listeners might very well know, or, or if they don't, um, there are a lot of advantages of air disc brakes. Uh, stopping perform performance is a lot better. Uh, noise is a lot less, um, you know, constant brake performance. You're able to, to monitor the wear of the brakes a lot easier than you are uh, with drum brakes as well. So all of those advantages, um, bring to it that this technology is now also being adopted by by the industry as well people are seeing the benefits of these and and um, I, I would like to hear from you what do you see on it uh, um, at least from our side that's what we see yeah i mean you know five years ago nobody was talking about it you kind of had the early adopters that were buying them on their trucks and, and these things were happening right and i think like any new technology once the the price starts to come down and the roi really starts to make sense things start to happen really quick. 
And what I try to get across to our audience is like, look, you guys need to figure out the new technology. Like I have, we've done, I've done so many episodes on autonomous driving, on EVs. We're going to talk about in a second here, new technology. Like those are the skill sets, the repair shops, the futures need to understand and be really good at to diagnose trucks. You said it yourself, whole bunch more sensors, whole bunch more things. And what I try to tell people is like, look, if your shop's making money off of doing transmission rebuilds, well, guess what? Machinery's better. The oil's better. They're not failing as often as they used to. And they got a million mile warranties now. Uh, go look at brakes, right? If you're doing a lot of brake jobs in your shop, well, guess what? Air disc brakes are here. They take 25% less, t- 75% less time to fit, to replace one of those versus air disc brakes. They stop the vehicle quicker. They're lighter. Like you can just go down the list of all the, all the reasons to do it. Uh, my dad owns a concrete company and for them, for them, a pound of anything is a more pound of concrete they can haul. So you know, they're like, yeah, they were a little bit more expensive, but man, it was just the weight savings was worth it, was worth it to them. Not, not with all the other things. So it, it's really exciting. And I know the stopping distance is another one because these things can actually stop your vehicle much quicker than the traditional systems. You, you know, uh, research that we have seen is uh, drum brakes stop at about two, at an average of, of, of about 262 feet. These guys can stop at about 220. So you know that's that's safety right there. You know, forgetting this is mechanical safety rather than talking about sensor-based safety. Yeah, and again, I, I always tell people like you have no idea the technology coming down the pipeline and how it affects your business. So down in our conference room, I have two of these concrete blocks, and one of them is the first like concrete block my dad's factory ever built. Right. And it's got a nice picture on there. It's got my grandfather there standing next to it. It's in a display case. Um, I'm like, oh, it's the first one my family ever did in the 70s, blah, blah, blah. And then, like, next to it, I have the last block that they ever did in 2009. Right. And they're like, well, what happened? I'm like, you know, it had nothing to do with their business. That, that was nothing to do with it. Technology changed. And people didn't understand, like, technology affected a concrete block industry that's been around for thousands of years. It's definitely going to have an impact in everyone's industry listening to this no matter what they're doing. Technology just kind of keeps making its way in and people, what works, people use, and it just really changes and disrupts things. And I think for a lot of us sitting around can think back to, I was just telling someone the other day, like, what's less, like, do you remember using a map? Could you even get, could people even get around today with a GPS on their phone? They probably couldn't, right? But these are things, it just changes so quick and you get used to it. So it, it's really interesting to see technology and especially what ZF is doing uh, leading the forefront of this because it's a whole new business market all of a sudden, whole new whole new revenue stream for, for companies such as ZF to get into this. And I know a big one of those is EVs. So electrification is is coming here. What's ZF doing on the EV front? So you know, um, as part of multiple divisions that we have, so I'll, I'll break it down into how we support EVs and then how some of our um, other divisions are supporting EVs as well because. Um, the the biggest challenge that we find is the infrastructure, right? I mean, the adoption of EVs um, in the last mile market is there for the larger companies, but when it comes to the smaller companies, though they see the benefits because of the infrastructure not being there, they don't don't take it, uh, don't use EVs as much as they would like to. Uh, what we've been doing in the EV space is, of course, you know, we we have all all sorts of um, uh, solutions for electric axles, um, name it that you want. We, we have an entire portfolio that supports all the way from class three trucks to class eight trucks. And uh, like we were talking about, technology is just going to get better and better as, as we move along. Uh, with this le- latest mandate of electrification and the infrastructure bill, I think there is going to be more and more um, investment in the infrastructure. And my my personal feeling is that instead of taking a um, a giant st- step towards completely electrifying a fleet, um, we should be looking at small baby steps to get drivers used to it, to see how the maintenance works, if the ROI is there, if you need to use one technology versus the other, wait a couple of years for one technology or the other. So, you know, it, it's again, like um, autonomous vehicles, electrification is becoming really, really, and it's coming quicker than than uh, um, than autonomous is. And then the other trend we are seeing is fuel cells. Uh, I'm sure you, you've seen uh, major companies making headways. You know, Toyota made a made some sort of a statement with Eno. 
Um, I, I know Nikola is doing a lot of stuff. Tesla is always uh, dipping their feet in there. So I, I call it alternative propulsion, moving away from internal combustion engines to uh, some sort of electrification or some sort of battery electric vehicles. They are coming. Um, just hunker down and, and get ready for the exciting ride. Yeah, no, I, I mean, I, I, I again, I, I'm beating the same drum with people as I'm talking to them, right? It's, hey, they're, they're, they're coming. <laughs> There's no doubt about it. You can believe all you want that they're not going to work. The government's put enough tax incentives, enough things to make it work in certain industries. And like you said, with the fleet, you're absolutely right. They're not going to just be like, we're going all EV. They're going to be like, all right, we have this fleet. Which routes? Which trucks? Let's do a couple of them. Great, they're working. Let's and let's keep expanding out. And yeah, there's challenges that industries had, and people can you know kind of bash the whole like, oh, there's not enough grid or enough power plants. You know what? There wasn't enough fuel pumps when all these trucks and internal combustion engines and it got built out. So it's it's going to be it's going to be the same way. And by the way, those gas stations are probably going to be EV charging stations once there's enough volume for them, right? So they're they're going to figure all these things out. And, and just to add to that, you know, I'm, I'm sure you, you read it in the news every single day. There are lots of EV startups coming up. So, you know, people ask us, who's going to survive? Uh, our, our look at it is, is that the technology will survive. The companies might not, but all of the progression that these smaller companies are making and contributing to the technology will contribute towards EV being commercially viable in the next few years. Yeah, I mean, you guys are well positioned, right? Because you're making the componentry for the manufacturers to enable them to do these things. So I'm just curious, like, what's it what's it like outside the United States? I kind of know, like, my little piece of the world here. Um, Europe EVs, I mean, I assume you guys are kind of all over Asia and all these all these different places, if I had to guess. Um, you, you are absolutely right about that. And, and the biggest uh, uh, move in electrification and um, aut- autonomy, the U.S. is the leader by far because of uh, of the... Um, the number of companies that are in uh, in the AV space, but in the EV space, there is a lot of work being done in Asia as well as in Europe. Uh, but their needs of EVs are for much smaller last mile delivery kinds of applications. Uh, so scaling them up to class eight is, a, is something that a challenge uh, taken over by the North American, you know, our, our trucks are much bigger. We, we transport a lot more freight over the roads than, uh, than Asia and, and Europe does. So obviously, you know, <laughs> we do the, uh, the building up of the Class 8 trucks for electrification. So that's, that's uh, again, global solutions. Um, what we learn with the miles that are being put on in Europe and in, in Asia, all of these add to uh, building better products for the North American market going forward. Yeah. And I, I, I think when I look at the EV market, again, everyone sees the headlines, the EV truck driving down the freeway and everything. And, you know, what I see is companies like Exos and these other ones, you know, they, they're building like in like specific applications that really make sense. I mean, even Navistar saying we're going to do EVs, but it's school buses. They go on the same route. They're back at a certain time. They charge during off peak hours. Like, but, you know, check, check, check. Like, great. Um Max going after the uh, refuse market first. Again, makes sense. Set routes, you know, brakes squealing and all these things happen. And, you know, when people are trying to pick up garbages um, and I've, I've had the pleasure to drive some of these things. So it is it is truly, truly fascinating and, and an interesting uh, place to be in right now. So, uh, Shah, I really appreciate you coming on, talking about all these things. I could probably make an episode on each one of these things. So I know we kind of jammed a, a lot in here. Uh, where where can people go if they want to learn more about ZF, the technologies, or connect with you? What do you want to throw out there to them? So, you know, um, I, I'm sure we can, we, uh, I'll send you my email address, but uh, it's uh, it's spelled chirag.shah at zf.com. Personally, if you guys want to reach out, if you need any information, that's, uh, that's all fair and good. Happy to connect, happy to network, any information I can provide. Uh, ZF.com is a pretty good website to go to and and just make sure, you know, that gives you a global picture of what ZF is doing. And then from there on, you can narrow down to North America and see specific products that we have, uh, specific announcements that we make. You know, we are all at trade shows and stuff. So happy to connect with connect your viewers with whoever, uh, you know, whatever information they require, be it old technology, be it new technology, anything um, at your service. Well, again, appreciate you coming on, having the conversation with us. I love these. I, I learned something today. So if I learned something, I know for sure our audience learned something. 
So it's always great to get experts on here that really know these things and can break it down for people and explain what's going on. And you're right, your website actually, I did so much research on the website. I'm like, man, that's like a wealth of knowledge on this thing between the videos, the PDFs, the web pages. You can tell when someone puts forth an effort on that type of stuff. Uh, but we're gonna wrap this one up. We're gonna call it an episode. And remember, it's not just diagnostics, it's diagnostics done right. You just heard it here, new technology, more sensors, more computers, more wires, radars, like all this stuff is coming. You gotta get good at it now. Start today before it's too late. All right, thank you guys. Catch you on the next episode. Oh,